Good afternoon, our friends, or good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome back to the Some Low Grade Gamers podcast. Here we are with episode six this week. As usual, some kind of gaming, which consists of myself and the lovely Laura over here. Hi. Are joined by the low grade gamer himself, Mr. Dan, who's over there. How are we all? <laughs> good. How are you? Good, good. Been, been busy, obviously, with Christmas. It's, yes. it's, it's a, a busy time. time of year. 100%. So we're just going to kick off with a bit of festive cheer this week, I think. How was your Christmas, Dan? How was, how was your daughter over Christmas? It's always funner when you have little kids around. Yeah. No, it definitely. Very different. Uh, yes. Playing. She got given a video game, which is good for me. So she got yes. uh, given Mario Kart Live, which... Oh, cool. Yeah, it's cool. Look, nice. It's not a bad game. I think it, it does have some flaws in terms of connectivity to the cart and, and the distance in which that you can sort of be connected. It, it really maxes out at four metres. So you, you can't even yeah, really go around Yeah, it's not very far, the, is it? Yeah. People have larger homes than four metres. Yeah. So, but we set it up so that way the straight was the bit that would uh, lose connection. So we just sort of coasted on until it reached. Yeah, nice. Most of the time (laughs) made the corner. Sometimes you didn't, but most of the times, yeah, it was good. Okay, so you've got to make yourself small tracks. That's a bit of a shame. Yeah, it's it is, a, considering the size of some of it and the turning circle of the car, I don't think it could do much smaller, I guess. Okay. But, look, overall, it's a fun game. I think it's good for uh, kids that are like four, which is my yep. daughter, because the car doesn't go too fast. Okay. Like, oh, yeah. It's, it's pretty chill. It takes its time yeah, to do what it needs to do. People yeah, would so. want a bit more speed. Yeah, so not not a huge, not a huge issue. So that that's that's been a bit of fun. Yeah, and it's a little bit of a gimmick, isn't it? It is a bit of a gimmick. Mm. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's something. Look, if we were into content creation when it got released, we probably would have definitely picked one up. They look pretty cool. Let's be honest. But it's a gimmick, and we would have played with it twice, and then probably, mm, unfortunately, just released Mario Kart Nine already. Please, Nintendo. Yeah, Mario Kart 9. You listening? We want it. Deluxe. Mm. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, so it sounds like you had guys? a good what time. What have you man. been doing? Uh, we went up to my father's for Christmas. He lives about three hours away from us. We actually had two Christmases technically, mm. so we went to my mum's before that. Laura's family are unfortunately across the ditch in New Zealand, so, you know, with the real world situations going on maybe next year yes mm. fingers crossed we'll get over there next year and spend it with them but we just had to deal with my parents this year didn't we <laughs> yeah uh, you make it sound like a bad thing ah, it wasn't a bad thing. <laughs> no it was a bit of fun it was good to get away from home for a bit we've been off work for like a week now but we've just been so busy it, yeah no no it doesn't feel like we've really had a break it's this time of year isn't it yeah yeah, it's just just crazy. I mean, I got to play a little bit of games when I was at my dad's. We bought our Switches again, the beauty of the Switch. Mm-hmm. My brother doesn't have a Switch, and he had to lug up a TV and his PS4 with him. It's uh, a lot harder without a Switch, that's it, for sure. It is. Now, he does have the NVIDIA cloud gaming service, so he is able to play that on his phone where he lives, uh, he lives in like a granny flat at my mum's house which is away from the house. So the internet connection isn't solid enough to use the cloud service down there. But at my dad's house, he, he's obviously in a, in a spare room at dad's and the internet connection is pretty solid. Up in Shepparton, where my father lives, is one of the first places in Australia to receive NBN, like fiber optics, to the house. Yeah, the internet's pretty good up there. Yeah, so it's, it's actually like one of the fastest internets in Australia, which is pretty random for 
up in up in Shepparton. Uh, he's he's even outside of Shepparton, like a smaller town outside there. Anyways, he's got good internet. Mm-hmm. So my brother had a had a heaps of fun setting his uh, setting his phone up on my dad's selfie stick and then just playing away with his PS4 controller. But it chews through your battery, so yeah. it's not a viable option for the whole time. So he did have to, yeah, lug his PS4 and lug his like his TV up and then there's no TV stand in the spare room. So he had to set up the ironing board and it's just way easier if you own a switch. Yeah. Way <laughs> yeah. easier. I think he was pretty jealous. Yeah. He was definitely jealous of that. Uh, but yeah, the cloud gaming works fantastically. It just, yeah, it does, it does just drain the hell out of your phone. I've been playing a lot of, I finished Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, which was nice. I finally got around to completing the boo saga in that. Just got a bit distracted and yeah, didn't didn't end up doing that. Got up to evil Boo, if anyone remembers <laughs> that. It's, it's uh, Mr. Satan and Boo, and then goes evil and yeah, got 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 up to there. And then just I think Shin Megami ca- came along or something else. A lot came, of things came along. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things came along. It was pretty hectic near the end of the year there for video game sales. So I played a lot of that. What did what did you play, Laura, while we're up there? Uh, Metroid Dread. That's- I played a lot of Metroid Dread, and I was also playing a, a little bit of Animal Crossing. Oh yeah, I love playing Animal Crossing at Christmas time because you know all your villagers are all cheery for Christmas and there's this little jingle guy and he gives you this magical Santa sack and you can give gifts out to all your villagers. Classic, Good times. Classic Animal Crossing, getting around all the holidays. Yeah. I think that's the theme though, isn't it now? Like if you have a look at Valhalla as an example, I, I jumped onto Valhalla to do the latest DLC and yep. it's snowing there too. <sighs> Are you sure that's not just because it's in England? No, no, no. They've got a full festive. Like, okay. Yeah, no, they've got like a full festival on. <laughs> I was going to say, it is. Awesome. Uh, she's a Viking, you know. It's uh, kind of kind of set where no, it's no, no. a They've lot. got a full festival on and <laughs> like all these additional uh, quests that you can do and other bits and pieces as part oh, of the cool. festival update. And even awesome. thinking back to Destiny 2, uh, like, I haven't played that yeah. for a little while now, but. When uh, Halloween was around, they had a Halloween themed. Yeah, that's weekend. cool. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love it when games are reflecting the holidays. Yeah, because it makes you want to jump back in. Yeah. Is well, it- I haven't played Animal Crossing since like the DLC. So, and I, like I when when we were playing the DLC, I certainly wasn't like on my island and stuff. So it was fun to go back there. I redid a part of my island that I'd wanted to redo for ages. So yeah, nice. Got some Mario mushrooms. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Mario DLC. And Got Animal a Princess Crossing. Peach outfit. Ooh, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Flash. So we did get to play a few video games. It yeah, just we was did. Not as much as we would have liked. Make sure to check out our YouTube video, which releases on Thursday, to find out what else we got. We're just going to do a gaming haul video this week because it's been hectic and it's a nice, simple, fun one to do. So, yeah, if you want to find out, what else some kind of gaming got for Christmas, then yeah, head over and subscribe to our YouTube. It's just some kind of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> so we're glad we had a good, everyone had a good Christmas. That's important. Hopefully you guys all did too. If Christmas is tough for you, we know that I've been saying this a lot lately, but Christmas is a really tough time for some people and it's not, it's not happy for everyone. Uh, it's kind of rude of people to assume that. I think it's actually a really tough time of the year for a lot of people and a lot of people I know personally. So if that's you, that's okay. And good on you for sticking through it because it really is rubbed in your face at this time of year. So yeah, the heart goes out to those people that had a had a tough time this year, 100%. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we're over the introductions and the Christmas spirit, it's past Christmas now. We don't need any of that. <laughs> Let's move on to a couple of topics. So we are going to talk about the highest rated games of 2021. But before we get on to that, we've got a couple of smaller smaller little topics we just wanted to bring up quickly. The first of which our tech man over here, Mr. Tech Support, Dan at the low grade, is going gonna, is gonna to introduce us to. Dan, what's our first subject matter today? This is a subject matter that 
is going to, I think, get bigger and bigger with next generation consoles being more and more available. So the PlayStation, so my- yeah, the PlayStation Five and the Series X, as an example, they have HDMI two point one. So the idea behind two point one is eight K. This is off the top of my head, but eight K. Uh, I think it's ten K. I hate to interrupt. Yeah, eight K at sixty hertz is where I was going with that, but it goes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, it can support 10K as well and yep. 4K at 120 hertz. Those are the two, 8K at 60 and, and 4K at 120. That's, you know, as gamers, that's really what, you know, we'd be looking at probably more the 4K at 120 hertz. Yeah, 100%. But yeah, yeah. Fantastic. The disappointing thing that came out just recently is just because something is called HDMI 2.1, be it a TV or a monitor, it doesn't mm-hmm. actually mean it has 2.1 features. They are allowed to stick that label on bloody anything, apparently. Yeah, that's a bit sad that there's no quality control in terms of that. Like, usually to say something is a thing, it has to be that thing. <laughs> the the yeah. HDMI regulatory body, though doesn't seem yeah. to care. Like that's the, okay. that's no, they're like, that's cool. That's so who, how does this regulatory body work? Is HDMI a company in itself that produces HDMI cables these, or is there just a governing system or like, how does this, how does this work? Yeah. It's sort of like a governing system. Same thing like with Bluetooth as an example. So Bluetooth have had a, a regulatory uh, set up for quite a while, which, you know, as the generations increase, this is what is meant to be the base of, say, Bluetooth 4.0 and then Bluetooth 5.0. These are the base stats. This is what you need to have if you want to call it blah, blah, blah. Similar to, I guess, ANCAP safety rating. Uh, yeah. Well, some sort of quality control then you would assume, yeah. but yeah. in this case. Yeah, but like G, like the... Um, G and PG and yeah. MA yeah. For, for movies. and I'm uh, sure it's different in every country, but age yeah. ratings for movies. HDMI regulatory stuff, they just yep. don't okay. seem to... Like, they it's just don't. literally a non-issue for them. I so they've, don't been, they've actually been approached why. and they have come back with, yep, it's all good. So that 2.1 HDMI TV or monitor you bought doesn't have to be 4K at 120 hertz doesn't have to be 8K at 60 hertz, doesn't have to have dynamic HDR or 48 gigabyte, 48 gigabit bandwidth. It just is a label that the companies probably pay to put on there. It's all mm. about money. Let's it's just like honest. free range, isn't it? Exa- yes, exactly. Your free range TV probably isn't free range. Mm, yeah, it's probably... There's probably not one chicken per 10 square meters on your TV. <laughs> <laughs> your bandwidth isn't, is, yeah. Yeah, that's, just, um, it's I a bit of a shame. Really it's just anti consumer, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's just a shame that, you know, you trust something to be enforcing some sort of quality control and you expect when you buy a certain thing that that's what you're going to be receiving. But, in this case, case, you don't. So, yeah, that's pretty disappointing for a lot of people, I'm sure. I'm sure heaps of people paid extra for that label to have the HDMI 2.1 and they don't have it and they're probably pissed. Absolutely. I would be pretty upset. So, basically, check the specs of you your check, TV itself. Yeah, you need to check your specifications. Yep. So, check the resolution. Check if yep. it's got H, uh, dynamic HDR. Don't just accept that 2.1 uh, as yep. a Don't trust. sort of thing, I guess. So I'm really glad because we recently got a new TV. We, we uh, got our hands on the PS5 this year. Thank God. We're one of the lucky ones. And we had to, we didn't have to, but I wanted to pick up a new TV to make full use of the specs of the PS5. Uh, obviously, last gen and the Switch don't really run as well we could we'll just leave it at that um <laughs> so yeah we picked up a new tv and 
super thankful that we were looking at the actual specifications of the actual TV and not just trusting the 2.1. We were very thorough with it, uh, but I feel like we were like we were far more thorough with it than anybody I know that has ever purchased a TV. Yeah, well, I feel like if you're just like an average Joe or like you're a mom or something or even some like a parent who's buying a Christmas present for yes. their kid or something probably mm-hmm. wouldn't be looking as – because they probably just don't understand. So they would like, you know, maybe fall for that sort of trickery. Absolutely. And it, the next question is, do people in these retail stores, do they understand that or did they just trust it as 2.1? Because it's meant to be this. so. You know, maybe, uh, you know, John Smith at JB Hi-Fi did think that and was selling selling people TVs with, no, 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 it's 2.1. It's got those specs. So, yeah, it's it's just a shame. So, look out for that, everybody. Check the specs on your TV. If you had an inkling that, you know, your your new game's not running at 60 FPS or whatever it is that, you expect it to be, yeah, check your specs. And I don't know if there's anything you can do about it, unfortunately. It's go- surely it's going to go to some ombudsman somewhere. Yeah, well, so, I don't HDMI know. HDMI 2.1 has been around for four years now. Yeah, okay, no shit. And it just, yeah, you, you said it well before. I think it's anti-consumerism. It really yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to say go back to JB Hi-Fi. Let's let's use that example and yep. say I asked for a TV with two point one. I was told I was under the impression that the the settings were going to be at blah 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 blah. Whose fault is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely not the consumer's fault because they were essentially lied to. Pretty much. Yep, but uh, it's a harsh world we live in, and money rules it quite unfortunately. Mm. But you know, it it is what it is, I guess. And we're sorry if you're part of that group of people that got fooled into it. Not fair. No, not fair. It's really not fair. That's just classic, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, exactly. Classic big corporations. Mm-hmm. Classic big corporations. Well, consumer you know well. what? That's enough negativity for today, I think. Let's move on to a bit of a happier story that happened this week. A very exciting story. Yeah, this is this one's pretty cool, everyone. I'm pretty jealous. So of this one. Japan, classic Japan, always lead world leaders when it comes to video games and technology in general, really. Huge market. They have just opened their first ever esports high school. <sighs> How cool is that? I would have loved to study esports at school. Man. Oh, me too. So it's not just, it's obviously not just come and play games. They they cover the curriculum as well. It's not um not just like random, you know, send you send the kids if you don't care about them, just go play games. <laughs> they do cover the full curriculum, so they are able to go on to tertiary. Uh, further education afterwards if you, if you want to. But it's basically decked out with a hell of a lot of mad gaming PCs. I think they're I think they're using the GeForce 3070, all these PCs that they've got in there. So it's it's they're pretty good graphic cards, that's mm-hmm. for sure. Let's be honest, the 3080s hardly exist these days. It's yeah. so hard to get your hands on one of them. Um yeah so you go there and play video games. Yeah, well, they teach you, like, the foundations of, like, a lot of different things because there's a lot of, like, different paths you can go down. So you mm-hmm. could be an e-sportsman or, like, um, they teach you, like, the fundamentals of being, like, you know, like a YouTuber mm-hmm. or a programmer. Like, there's so many different paths that you can go down. And- I think I saw them say commentator as well, esports commentator. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Oh. Fantastic, yeah. So, uh, did you guys enjoy school? Um, well, I probably would have if I went to that school. Dan? Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't big on school, although we did have uh, video games at school. Um, oh, that's cool. 
Yeah, we weren't allowed to play them, but we managed oh, to oh. work out how to do it. So, oh, yes. I played Pokemon on my calculator. No, we had Quake 2 cranky throughout the oh, whole school. No yeah, oh, using, using the, the local network. We oh, had, that um, is cool. We had Quake 2 cranking. Like, but don't you wish you could have been taught how to play video games? Yes. Competitively. I remember doing that a lot in English. <laughs> English class? What's that? I went to video games class. Yes. I, went to, Quake. I went to Quake. It's the dreams, isn't it? Yeah, I remember there was a couple of times in English where my teacher was like, Tom, why are you on your calculator? I'm like, oh, doing maths? <laughs> Definitely not playing Pokemon Red and Blue. No way. <laughs> but the calculators, even back then, this uh, quite a few years ago now, they were more powerful than the old Game Boy was. So it, it ran it easily. <laughs> easily. I'm Funny sad. as. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, oh, it's just, it's just so cool. It's just so cool. This thing's right in the middle of Shibuya, which is a massive, massive area in the middle of Tokyo, like the shopping shopping district. Laura and I had the pleasure of going there. It is uh, all it's cracked up to be. It's very cool. A lot of tourists, though, be warned. And, yeah, they, they obviously focus on a couple of specific types of games, being MOBAs, first-person shooters, third-person shooters, and real-time strategy, I yeah, believe. Yeah, that's well. what it was, yeah. Yeah, RTS. So, but, dude, I, I don't care. I would, have, I would have loved school. I would have not been suspended as many times as I was if I just happened to go <laughs> to yeah. a sports school in Japan. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that, like, um, it's being recognized as being like an actual yes. occupation and recognized as being like a really hard thing to do. So they want to teach people how to do it. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. It, the video game industry is being taken that's a, that little bit more seriously. You know? Yeah, well, now there's a school. Exactly, yeah. And it's not like like programming and you know, becoming a developer. I feel like that was always, you know, that that's a real job. Yeah, that's a real job. In quotation marks. but. Esports, I mean, it's esports content creation. Like, there's no difference if you're playing Dota in for Japan or for South Korea compared to playing soccer or football for Germany. You know, it's well, they're they're both games, just the, different types of games. Exactly, exactly. There's a sports bar that my friend used to work at that used to play esports every now and then. Oh, really? Yep. On Epic. one screen out of like 700 screens they had in this bar restaurant thing. I would love to go see some. I would love to go see a Pokemon tournament mm -hmm. and a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I would love to go. Yeah, even card games. Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. World Championships of Magic the Gathering. I could oh, totally get into that. That would just be epic, I think. Okay. That's some sport that I could really get into. <laughs> they do a lot of them. Um, they've been doing heaps recently I with COVID going on and that sort of thing. Have you guys ever watched Blaine's? Blaine's. Blaine's. Yeah, no. he's, a, he's pretty, he seems like a pretty decent guy. He's a content creator. I think he used to be okay. a teacher and he uh, ditched that for content creation. Don't blame him. Oh, good on him. Especially when you had students like us. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, too bad he wasn't working at esports high school in Japan. <laughs> but he's he's full on into Pokemon. Like you've got, he's he keeps track of the tournaments. He lets you yep. know when tournament codes uh, come in as well, so you can get oh, cool. winning Pokemon. Generally, yep. the, like a clone of it, of course. The yep. mm -hmm. winning Pokemon from the tournament. So oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, I've got. Probably five or six. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, to, and they've actually they get like a little tournament certificate and all that sort of stuff to say that that's where they came from. And this is Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yep, so mm -hmm. it's pretty. It's pretty cool the way they've done it. And he he's quite good. He he gets the codes. He lets people know, and it doesn't matter where you are. So you don't have to be like a lot of my Japanese uh, yeah, codes in Korea. But it's where most of the works, tournament happens. Works here. 
And yeah, I'm pretty sure I got a shiny Celebi. Oh, nice. That is cool. Something Zarud. Zarud? I think he was wearing a scarf. Ooh, oh, that's cute. cute. Yeah. So you get, there, there were two versions that they brought out of Zarud. One with the yeah. Pokemon movie, which was just a standard Zarud. And then yep, that makes sense. the, yeah, I'm pretty sure when they did Shiny Celebi, they also brought out Zarud with a scarf. I could be wrong, <laughs> but I know I did get another Zarud. I was more excited oh, about the Celebi, though. Yeah. Yes, shiny Celebi. Yeah, you can't really. Celebi is just such an adorable Pokemon. Isn't it? Yeah. I was going to say it's one of your favorites, isn't it? Grass Psychic. Yeah, super cute. It's got Laura written all but over But I don't it. usually use legendaries in my playthroughs. No, yeah. Are you a legendary type man, Dan? No, I, I honestly just stick with Charizard, to be honest. <laughs> oh, you're one of them. Yeah. Charizard always gets all the cool stuff. Well, you can't go wrong with Charizard. Yeah, but he doesn't need two mega evolutions and a Gigantamax yeah, form I was a bit and a this and a that. He needs all of that. Game, yeah. game Freak. <laughs> we disagreed. I was about to say Game Freak needs to move on from Charizard and Dan's just shaking mm. his head. <laughs> more. Don't. Give me more. Give me more. Give me more. <laughs> pretty Charizard sure my play. latest Sword and Shield team is three normal Charizard and then three shiny Charizard. <laughs> <laughs> all, all that's awesome. Max. That's, that's my team. What else do you need? I shake my head at you back. What else do you need other than oh, Charizard? Go straight to the water water sections. Obliterate them. I'll show you water Pokemon. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to say, you don't need any water Pokemon. Good thing Surf's not a thing anymore. Otherwise, you'd be screwed. Well, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so video game high school. Pretty damn impressive, and we're happy that the industry is being taken a bit more seriously. It's always nice. Quite jealous, yes, really. That's for sure. Do you think it's too late for me? Oh, we could go back to, to go school. Back, oh, go back to high, high school. school. What about being yeah. a teacher of esports? Uh, well, that's oh. so a lot of so the does teachers... that mean I need my degree in yeah, esports? What's the degree? So apparently, a lot of the teachers there are famous esports competitors. So yeah, they're probably like sixteen-year-olds teaching these, <laughs> teaching others. Well, maybe they've retired from their esports. Oh, and that's now, true. And they've grown up, and now they've um gone on to. Not that there isn't a lot of like adults that participate in esports. No, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm yeah, just joking. But maybe eventually, yes, yeah, thumbs get a bit older than the young thumbs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. the arthritis yeah, exactly. kicks in. Yeah, Dan knows all about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, we actually, when we were doing refurbishing of consoles and that sort of thing, mainly around the PlayStation 3 console, we would actually use AFL Live to test them. Okay. So that's, that's what we would use because you can just set up like no, like NPCs as an example. Yeah. And you just have the computer versus the computer. At the oh yeah, T, and yeah, that's true. You just sort of push that on repeat, so that way we didn't necessarily have to have somebody sitting down playing testing. because you can you can plug them in and and run them through the computer and test do different tests that way. Go okay, does this button work? Does this button yeah, work? Blah, blah 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 blah. But I found that wasn't a hundred percent accurate all the time like if we ran a, PlayStation, like a game yeah like if, if you ran a playstation 3 through afl live multiple times which is what we used to do yeah we, we have uh, we probably had 40 percent of those ps3s overheat oh really interesting yeah. that's that's actually a good question is there like i see where you were on the like game sports esports tangent is there esports for um, AFL? Is there esports for FIFA? FIFA, there is. Is there? That's a good question. Probably. FIFA, there would be. AFL, I don't know. Yeah. I was going to say. You I, would assume I, that there would be, wouldn't you? Yeah. 
I haven't heard of it because I've, I've never heard FIFA's of FIFA really. esports. No, well, FIFA's sport games in general aren't really my thing. So, hmm. uh, if there was, I wouldn't have. I'm not in the know how in the loop of that. But surely FIFA's surely. massive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, you'd think so. How how goes that? Screw normal soccer. Let's play soccer on the PlayStation. That's way better. Yeah, it is way better. I you don't get it. rained off. No, yeah, exactly. Yep. Rain, hail, or shine, you can play. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I do good. like watching esports. I haven't seen like League of Legends esports or something, but I have seen Tetris esports. Oh, that that's stuff's very hectic. exciting. It's actually really cool. Yeah, we put it on and we were like planning on watching it for like a few minutes, then we yep. watched it for ages. Like, oh, this will be funny. No, we got it through. It's actually. <laughs> yeah. Don't judge us until you've seen. Go do yourself a favor. Go to YouTube. Look up some Tetris esports. Those guys are freaks. It's riveting stuff. It's actually, it actually. Do you think is. they have Dance Dance Revolution esports? Surely, that's yeah. like that's that, very, that's huge in have Japan. That one. Yeah, massive. When we went to some arcades in Japan, like we just go and like stare at the people playing Dance Dance Revolution. They are beasts, man. It's actually insane. So good. Yeah. It's incredible to I see. I swear you can't see their feet. They're no. just like. Yeah. It's gone crazy. It's so incredible. Yeah, it really is. The people do some impressive stuff. Mm-hmm. People do some impressive stuff. <laughs> All right. Anyone else got anything to add when it comes to esports high schools? Um, I think we covered it, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Girl, now that our little little e's are out of the way, our little <laughs> subjects, little e's, I like it. Let's talk about the highest rated games of 2021. Ooh. So we're tossing up what to do here in this segment. We're going to talk about the best games of 2021, the highest selling games. We even thought about jumping into next year and what we're looking forward to. And then how do we judge best games? Like, like, cause highest selling isn't necessarily best, is it? Well, no, because like sometimes you always have like Minecraft is always there. Mm-hmm. GTA five always in the highest. And that's not a 2021 game. Yes. People uh, slam I that, it. though, in the Facebook comments. I don't know if you've noticed. Every time no. PlayStation lists that GTA Five got in the top number one again, there is yeah. Yeah. hundreds of comments of people going, like, nobody believes that. I, I still don't <laughs> yeah. believe that. Like, <laughs> so funny. You reckon they're just making numbers up? Tinfoil hats on again, yeah, everyone. Yeah, My tinfoil hat is royally on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like another advertisement slot for GTA oh, 5 for them. Rockstar's just paying them coin. Mm. Oh, that's a good mm, that's a good point, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why we decided we didn't want to do it that way because, yes. yeah, it's always like classic games, but we wanted to discuss games that actually came out this year. Exactly. So we thought the best way to do that was to head over to a little website called Metacritic, which gives you both player-based scores and critic-based scores and look at the top 10 games over there. Mm. It seems like a far better indication. reviewed. Yes, exactly. Best Best reviewed reviewed games. Uh, And... Looking at this list right now, I tell you straight away, some of these are nowhere near the top sellers on their respective consoles. Doesn't mean they're not fantastic games. In fact, there's quite a few games on this list that none of us have played mm. or even necessarily heard of. Yeah, there were some surprises. Yeah, there were some real surprises. So let's well, go down have, the have list. Have you guys ever heard of Forza? Oh. No. What's that? No. Nah. Nah. That, is that... That that space game? Yeah. Came out at the start of the year, right? Yeah. And you Yeah, I thought so. Oh, Got it. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Ah, no, nah, I know Forza. Bloody I, I've been playing that. Like, hey, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's start off. Oh, should we go from 10 to 1 or should we go from Ooh, 1 to 10? 10 to 1. What do you think, Dan? 10 to 1. Yeah, yeah, save I mean, the best for last. Yeah, I agree, actually. Save the best for last. Good idea. All right. So, number 10. This is the one. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, there's one other indie game. I was going to say it's the only indie game on the list, but there is one more. Mm. Chicory. Chicory is the 10th highest rated game of the year with a Metacritic score of 90. Pretty impressive score. It was... um. 
nominated for one of the categories of Game of the Year. I think it was the indie category. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it had to have been nominated well, yeah, in the indie category, it. didn't it? Yeah. And I think, did it just get announced for Switch in that indie direct? Yeah, the most recent indie direct yeah. we were talking about last week. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it just came out there. So, you know, I'm going to have to give it a go. It's the 10th highest rated game of the year. So it must be good. I mean, there's some good games above that. And there's, I tell you, there's some really good games below that as well. So yeah. for it to get number 10, Laura's, I think we are discussing this last week, really the indie fan out of all three of us here. I play quite a lot of them. Dan, not so much. So Yeah, I, I love can... indies, so I'll definitely give it a go. It looks really colourful. I'm not exactly sure what it entails. No, neither. I have no, I- no idea about it. Honestly. Yeah, but it looks really clue. colourful. Well, I'll report back in yes. a couple of weeks. Yeah, you will have to. You know, Dan, have you heard of it? No. Um, no. No. <laughs> Not for me, it's hard the... because I've been, I've got so many other things uh, going on gaming wise that things yep. just get pushed out a little bit sometimes. Like yep. at the moment, we are just listing so many digital games that nice. I am just not remembering what any of them are. All the, gla- but, all the games just blur into one. Well, I th- I'm pretty sure I added 45 today as an example. Oh, wow. Nice. So, wow. According to this list, you should probably add chicory to it. Yes. Wow, true. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not a bad idea at all. You're getting Here we go. quite an extensive library. We're simultaneously doing research for the low grade gamer website, aren't we? <laughs> this is good. You know, one thing that I think we should try doing and um, putting you guys on the spot here, but no, let's please. get, considering we're talking about Metacritic, let's get the biggest difference between player score and critic yep. score and play that game. Whatever the game okay. is with the we can biggest difference, difference, all yep. three of us give that game a go. Yeah, I'm down I'm for that. I'm so down for that. I uh, will work on that after this. Yeah, we'll find out what it is. Yeah, yeah. D- Dan and his tangents. No, uh, it sounds awesome. I'm down for that. I've got one that. more tangent I'm going to go on. Please. Yeah. If you're listening to this right now, DM us, Whispering Willows, and mm-hmm. we will get you that game for free. One person. So whoever gets in first. I like it. One game away every week for six weeks, five weeks. Five weeks now. Five weeks. Five weeks. Yeah, 100%. Whispering Willows is the first game. So if you're listening mm-hmm. and you want Whispering Willows, flick it to us in a DM. Whisper doesn't matter away. who you flick it to. It can either be the low-grade oh. gamer or can be some kind of gaming. Let us On know. anywhere as well. Email it. Whisper us on Twitch, send us a DM on Instagram, what whatever you like, whatever your and you will get you will get the Steam key for Whispering Willows. We're gonna do an in, we're doing an indie every week for the next five weeks, just to I guess I don't know show our appreciation for indies. Yeah, yeah. just and you, yeah. our listeners as well. Yes, so let's spread a bit of holiday cheer and. You know all the all the rest of that. Yeah, so chicory might have to be on there. We'll uh, Ooh. we will discuss it at a later date. <laughs> so next up, and that was number ten on Metacritic. Mm-hmm. So number nine, we have the remakes of Tony Hawk Pro Skater one and two. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't play the remake versions of these. They did release on the Switch as well. This is specifically the PS5 version, apparently. Yeah. It's out on all consoles now, but specifically the PS5 must just run better there. Yeah. Which doesn't surprise me. Got a rating of 90. Yeah, so. 90 also, which is pretty pretty good for a remaster. I have very fond memories of the original. So any, either of you two play the OG oh, Tony Hawks? Oh, yeah. Hawks? Absolute classics. Aren't they? Yeah. Back in the day, I'm going to go on a tangent again. Back in the Please. day, oh, I love it. We so Tony Hawk was so big, and oh. my mother wasn't really the best at acquiring games for us. 
So okay. he did her best, but yep. often the salesperson would redirect her. So mm-hmm. we thought we were getting Tony Hawk one day. Yeah. Uh-huh. We got a completely different game. And I don't know if anybody has really heard of it or remember it, but it's called yeah. Thrash Escape and Destroy. I mean, I've heard of the brand Thrasher, but... Skate and destroy. I don't remember what you do. I just remember that's what we had. And then eventually (laughs) we got Tony Hawks, but we had Thrasher. And the controls were so different. So when we did jump over to Tony Hawks, we we had no idea what we were doing. Like, what is is this weird skating game? She goes there to get Tony Hawks. She's like, oh. This one's a bit cheaper, but it's also skating. That's probably the same. Yeah. <laughs> Classic fun thing, isn't it? I love it. Oh, that's so good. Bliss. Oh, man. Oh, my mum still does it. She got me a pair of medium pants this year, and I was like, oh, I think they'll fit. I'm usually a large. And she's like, that's the same thing. <laughs> Not what? really. What do you mean, mum? It's like they're two completely different sizes. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Good so, classic mothers. Bless, but oh, yeah. bless them. It's yes. got a good soundtrack on it there. Shout out to all the mums. They deserve Thrasher all the great soundtrack. Get. Yeah, doesn't it? What does? Thrasher, Thrasher State and Destroy you? had a really good soundtrack. Oh. Oh, it had to have Seek and Destroy by Metallica on there, didn't it? Oh, Surely. I don't remember. Do, do, Skate and Destroy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Surely. honestly, it had a great Great playlist. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. It had something going for it. Fun fact. The reason there is an amplifier and a guitar sitting behind me right now and the reason I picked up a guitar in the first place was because of Tony Hawk. That soundtrack on those games, number two. I never – I don't. I think I was a little bit too young for the first one, but two, three, and four, the soundtracks on those. I remember hearing Ace of Spades by Motorhead for the first time and being like, I need to learn how to make an instrument do that. That is awesome. <laughs> because you're a PlayStation yeah. boy. Yes. Could you, there was a Tony Hawk game. Mm-hmm. It was original Xbox era. And okay. original PS2. Xbox, you could load your own music. Oh, okay. Uh, awesome. I mean, maybe we could have done that, but... I just, I remember making my own playlist of like all the rock and metal songs in Tony Hawk and just getting rid of all the rest and r- repeating that. It was like 10 minutes worth of playlist. Oh, so you could pick your own playlist? Yeah, out of yeah. the ones they had on there, oh. but I never I never imported my own music. Yeah. I, on, I on mean, Xbox, maybe you could, you could put your like CD in there, download all the songs to your Xbox and then have that playing in in the background in Tony Hawk. Now that is so that is awesome. Yeah, especially you know I was very hip, young dude mm, back very in cool the day. young man. I'm sure. Oh God, here we go. Can you? What did you guess, put in there? Can you guess what? It wasn't artist a so I would fresh have had CD, fun? was it? What? It wasn't a so fresh. It wasn't a so fresh CD. No. Okay. Whoo. Oh, he's cooler than that. Did you have So Fresh in New Zealand? Uh, it went by a different name. Yeah, it was like all the pop hits. Yeah. Top 10 pop hits or something. Yeah, what was it called in New Zealand? It, 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 it's not worth it knowing. It was like it's So okay. Hot or something. I yeah, think. something like that. Uh, all, I had, all I had cranking was Eminem. Oh, oh God. Nice. That, I should have known. Hey, yeah, Classic. <laughs> Classic oh, white man. boy stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Oh, that's all right. No judgment here. What, whatever floats your boat, especially at that age. Yeah. Oh, I loved Eminem, man. Oh, I still like Eminem. I would yeah, have put Eminem in there. But I, uh, you know, just bit of no doubt. Oh, nice. Yeah, classic. Yeah. Uh, I think I was the coolest one listening to Motorhead and System of Down on the Tony Hawk Pro Skater Three soundtrack. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, good times. But yeah, maybe, or maybe we should all go back and play one and two. We obviously have pretty fond memories of the originals. One of my friends got it on the Switch and he said it was fantastic. So if it runs well on the Switch, then I can only imagine 
how it would look and play on the PS5. Plus, every, we got a whole new generation of people into Tony Hawk and listening to that awesome soundtrack. Yeah, good that, change. That's okay by me. All right, at number eight. Bit on, of an interesting one. Took yeah. me off guard. Yeah, go on. Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hmm. Have you dabbled, Dan? Nah. <laughs> me neither. Why not? Do you know what one of the most popular games, and I'm way off course here, again, on a tangent. <laughs> One of the most popular games for online digital purchasing yeah. is a simulator game. I'll let you guess what it is. Farming oh, simulator. Oh, yeah. You got it straight away. Oh, it's yes. huge on Twitch, man. It's yeah, massive. it's huge. Yeah, real farmers play farming simulator on Twitch. There's a guy who has like a setup. Yeah, there's a guy who has a full He's tractor like, setup. Yeah. He's, you know, yeah. I don't know, cutting his crops. He's got his floor. I, I, tuned in, I tuned into him and he's just like, I think he was going to deliver his crops in his car and he's just like got his steering wheel and he's like changing gears with his big gear shift on the on the floor and on he's just tractor. like, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's not it's not high highly rated as Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah. Apparently, that's the better game. I really to- want to try Farming Simulator, man. Like, I love my farming sims and it's. Seems to be the ultimate simulator, doesn't it? Yeah, it's so the realistic. The simiest of simulators. Well, nah, I say you're wrong because Microsoft Flight Simulator is the simiest of simulators. Well, of farming simulators. Nah, though. but that's not as cool as flying a plane. <sighs> yeah, well, arguably more interesting. Yeah, I guess it depends. Now, Microsoft Can you do flips. Microsoft stuff? Flight Simulator is like the, like it's 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 amazing. It's, it is very cool what they've been able to do and put into a game. I think the download size is like 1 million gigabytes or something ridiculous. I wonder if you can, like, crash and die. In Microsoft Flight Simulator? Yeah, yeah 100%. I hope so. Cool. cool. <laughs> Not really a simulator if you can't do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think they've taken out things like... Uh, crashing into buildings for well i mean for obvious basically. reasons but yeah they've essentially built the whole world and you can just fly around it like it's it's absolutely crazy it's a, a feat yeah that's for sure and look sims aren't my favorite i like cozy sims like uh animal crossing or stardew valley but these ones are like game. true to life sims, exactly real well, life simulators my favorite simulator thing was yeah sim- go on Sim City on the Super Nintendo. Ah, Sim City. And I still have it. I still have it. I love Sims. We actually started our Twitch careers, if you will, if that's what it is, playing The Sims. Yeah. And, yeah, you can't beat The Sims, man. There's (laughs) something about The Sims. All of them. I can just play them for ages and ages. 100%. 100%. We'll have to do that for – so we're thinking of um, doing a 24-hour stream. We've got a goal. Mm-hmm. If we reach said goal in a certain amount of time, then we will do a 24-hour stream. So The Sims is just like the perfect one to throw in there because I feel like hours can just disappear so quick when you're playing The Sims. Exactly, 100%. Yeah. So head on over to Twitch TV for such some kind of gaming if you want to support us in that endeavor and see us – Play a video game for 24 hours straight and probably be near death after that. Mm. It'll be fun. Yeah, good times. <laughs> uh, moving on from the simulators because I feel like there's not much to add there. Oh, wait. No, I've got a story. I'm the one who said move on. I've got a flight simulator story. What's it? One of, I call him Uncle Johnny, but he's actually my friend's uncle. Shout out to Uncle Johnny. He is obsessed with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Absolutely obsessed. Really? Yeah, and he will he will like take the plane off and like do all the like pre-flight checks, all that jazz, and he'll take the plane off and he'll actually put it on autopilot while he goes to bed. <laughs> so he'll be on like a 10-hour flight and he'll fly the first hour, put it on autopilot, because it's essentially what pilots do. They're just there to make sure that kind of nothing goes wrong while the plane's on autopilot. Mm-hmm. And he'll go to bed. Obviously not doing his job, probably. Yeah, and then wake up and he's there. Land the plane. Wake up. Yeah, he's got he, an alarm set. He's like, oh, I can't sleep in. 
Yeah, legit. Yeah, <laughs> and he loves it. He's just Uncle Johnny lives by himself. He's over in Ireland, and he just yeah, he flies around the world of Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So it's been going for quite a while. Then the old Microsoft Flight Simulator. Is this a new one that's come out this year? Yes, it is a new version. There's been quite a few flight simulators. Um, as far as Microsoft Flight Simulator, I'm actually not. I think it's just a new version. Yeah. But yeah, he loves flight simulators, so that and he loves the new version as well. Is it actually like a simulator, as in the time it takes to fly from Adelaide to Melbourne? Yep, it can in be. I time. think. Yep. Wow. Yep. Again, he does real time flights. Yeah, he'll do a ten hour flight from, I don't know, South Africa to Europe. I'm just pulling things out of my butt here but i I guess that's about 10 hours maybe uh yeah and then he'll just put on autopilot and yeah it's it's a it's a real like it's it's a very cool simulator i wonder if occasionally like something goes wrong like you fly in a whole flock flock of of birds birds flies into the engines or something and i'm sure it does yeah Yeah. Yeah. how how about this i commit to playing that before next week Yay. Oh, yes. Do it. Excited. Oh, should I play Farming Simulator and then we can report back on yes. our simulation journeys? Do All it. right. <laughs> well, I got, an I got voucher. out of the simulators. <laughs> I got nah. an eShop voucher for Christmas, so it looks like hi. Nah, you got to play Farming Sim on the PC. That's the way to play it. Oh, is it? Yeah, surely. I okay. don't think the newest one, I don't think 2022 is out on the Switch yet. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, well PC it is. Better graphics, mate. Yeah. You can't right. even install <laughs> it. Right, it's well, so big. That yeah, is it's massive. It is huge. Oh, well, it probably won't fit on my Switch then. It is a huge game. No, that's Microsoft Flights. Oh, game. yeah. The one we're actually meant to be talking about. Oh, it's my <laughs> mistake. Sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on from simulators and their massive download sizes. At number seven on Medicrick, we have Psychonauts, number two. Did any play, anybody play the original Psychonauts? Dan, you're an Xbox man growing up. Uh. Yeah, I did a little bit, but it's not not that big in my mind, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yep, fair enough. People have waited, or people did wait such a long time for Psychonauts 2. Because the first one is, I think it's a little bit of a cult classic. Again, not an Xbox player and definitely didn't have the consoles growing up, so never got to play the first one. But, I mean, Psychonauts, too. It's just a work of art. I love it. Got nominated for so many categories Mm. at the Game Awards. Deservingly so. Best art direction or art style. It was up for Game of the Year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, look, it's it's a mad 3D platformer. It's psychedelic. It's a bit crazy, a bit weird. The voice of the main character is the voice of Invader Zim, if anyone remembers Invader Zim. One of my favorite cartoons of all time. So, I mean, I, I think it's well-deserved. I think it was an absolute fantastic game. I wouldn't have been upset if it won Game of the Year. So it deserves number seven here, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys think? Well, even the game that won Game of the Year isn't on this list. No, no. this so is that's actually, an interesting fact. Yeah, Psychonauts is actually the only game that was nominated for Game of the Year at the Game Awards that is in the top ten on Metacritic. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking Forza was, but it wasn't, was it? No. Oh, you no, jumped into something else. You guys have yeah, given it away. It yeah, it wasn't Game of the Year, but it was at the Game Awards. Yeah, there was a couple that were at the Game Awards. But yeah, Psychonauts is the only one. So maybe that should have won Game of the Year. Who knows? Who knows? Well, oh, good. No, this is, that was a nice quick one. Let's move on again. <laughs> Number six on Metacritic. The new Final Fantasy fourteen DLC, which is interesting. Does anyone has anyone played it? Well, I haven't played it, but I don't have time to sit there and wait possible. to start again. Yes, I was going to say I haven't played it because yeah. I don't have a spare five hours to wait for it to start. Yeah, because it's almost impossible to play. Now, I know somebody who is like a huge fan of this game, mm-hmm. but yeah, I just don't have a lot of time to play games, to be honest, for the most part, let alone wait five hours to, Mm -hmm. if I have to wait five hours to get into the actual game, like that's all of my game playing time. Yeah. And more. more. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's either sleep for two hours a day or 
not play it. Yeah. Or so not put you, a video out that week or something. Yeah. So. so for those of you that don't know that uh, the Final Fantasy fourteen servers are struggling big time because the new DLC, which is called Endwalker, has just been released. Obviously, that's what we're talking about. And it's just the servers are struggling. It's, the popularity of the game has just surged massively, as it does every time they release new story content in Final Fantasy fourteen. But yep, they I guess they're just not willing to upgrade the servers because well, it drops off again afterwards or something. Maybe it's just harder than it seems to Oh just no, I'm sure it's not servers. easy. Yeah, no, for, for sure. But yeah, they're they're really, really struggling. And to be honest, I thought that would have a massive impact on the score. But I yeah. guess yeah, I haven't even played the game if you're it's not into it. It's meant to be so, like incredible. Yeah, so, so you can't judge it if you're not even playing it. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And the people that have played it, obviously, rate it highly, 92 to be exact. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's nine, 92 Metacritic. That's that's pretty good, isn't mm-hmm. it? Let's be honest. And it's not everybody that has to wait five hours to get in. The no, game. sometimes you wait five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, our friend who who is obsessed with it, every time, I don't think I've looked at Discord once and it hasn't said he's playing Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he said he's he's waited upwards of three hours and he's also waited like you know, 10, 30 seconds. Yeah. So it's just luck of the draw. Luck of the draw. Probably yeah. like whatever time it is, how many people are on the servers yeah. at the. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And like, it's a massive MMORPG. So it's, it is hard to just get into. If From you what I've seen kept and up heard, with it. though, it looks like really great. Oh, no. I think it deserves that Metacritic. Yeah. Score, for sure. 100%. You know what else deserves the Metacritic score? The one that we've been dropping hints to the whole time. My bad. <laughs> Number five on the list. Ah, it's fine. Dan did it first. <laughs> <laughs> Number five on the list with a score of also 92 is Forza, the new Forza Horizon game. I definitely need a devil in this one. Yeah, uh, it is beautiful. It might be the best looking game of all time. Well, I'm sure it is. And isn't it like a very accurate representation of like the world? Yeah, Mexico. Yeah. That's, that's just that in incredible. Yeah. You can see individual spines on cactuses. Like wow. it's ridiculous. Yep. Uh, Dan, I think you've spent the most time with this game out of all of us. Laura hasn't dabbled. I've dabbled. You've actually played, I guess you could say. So would you like to take the reins on this one, sir? Yeah, I think they've done a look. They've done a, a good job. I think last time I I mentioned the fact that I, I disliked how easy it was to get cars. And yeah, oh, yeah that's I right. remember you saying that. Yeah, that's still the case. I have probably maybe ten hours, maybe, and I've got thirty three cars. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, I mean, variety is the spice of life. So yeah, it's just I don't know. It's just a bit too. Like, honestly, I love the game. I think they do a fantastic job in so many different areas. I like that you've got barns where you can fire and, like, broken down pieces of junk. I think my last one I got was a 65 Mustang that needs to be restored. So that's oh, really cool. cool. And you can send yeah, gifts to people. Yeah, oh, yeah. You can. So if you <laughs> find, once you've found a barn, you can leave gifts there for people. So oh, you cool. can leave a car. And that is amazing. It's adorable. Comes well, you've got 33. Maybe you should leave them for people, add some more been. excitement. I have. That's the thing. I've been, I, Can you put bows on them? I've left, I've left heaps <laughs> behind as well. That's the crazy thing about the game. Oh, yeah. Cool. So you love it, but you feel like there's not much of a challenge in the yeah, game. And I think the one of the cars that you get from the 20th anniversary stuff was, uh-huh. for me, it was a Porsche something spider. And oh, yeah. it's decked out in, like, Xbox decals and it's got Halo Infinite on the side that and makes- all these other bits and pieces. That, by far, is my most powerful car and most worked-on car. It literally can do anything. But I, have, cool. I don't feel like I've put enough hours in to have earned 
that okay. yeah, 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 you haven't yeah. earned it. Yeah, that's yeah, it's a bit of a shame. But I mean, look, if there's a problem to have, it's too much of something, I guess, you know. I'm not big on racing games. They're not really my thing. But Gran Turismo was my thing. Back in the day, yeah. yeah for, no, I, I love I played, Gran Turismo. I played Colin McKay Rally on the PS2, anyone? Nah. No. Nah. Not ringing back. Yeah, Dan, yeah. Yay. Yeah. yeah, it's someone. Yeah, I was Colin all Gran McKay Turismo. Rally. I was like, that's all I need. No, look, Gran Turismo was fantastic. I uh, played a little bit of grid, but they're just like, it's more at friends' houses. They just weren't my thing. But Forza, I took one look at that. I think we had our first proper look at it at E3 this year. Yeah, I think so. And I remember just sitting there like eyes wide, like, oh, my God. Yeah, I remember this just thinking insane. it looks insane. The graphics are just like next level aren't they and it's so much more than a racing game as well like you, it's not just going around a track 10 times which is let's be honest kind of what gran turismo was all well, about yeah. yeah um so that the fact has got a little bit more i feel like they've i mean they've done a really good job of making mm. somebody like me who's not interested interested well, I it kind of I love the fact that it's like an accurate representation of Mexico because it appeals to me and you probably so much more because we're like huge travelers. Obviously, in lockdown, we haven't been able to do so, but now I can like have a sneak peek at Mexico. I was gonna say we could travel somewhere to other than Google Earth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can travel anywhere if you try hard. <laughs> yeah, Falls is a great game. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah true. <laughs> Very Forza true. is a great game and probably deserved to be up for game of the year. To be I honest. think so. Yeah. And it definitely deserves this Metacritic score of 92. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my in my short time with it. Dan, do you agree with the 92? You happy with that? Yeah, look, other than the fact that I can get cars too quickly, which you know, it's not a huge issue, but mm. for me. I think it's it's really good. It, one of the biggest things I think is don't bother buying any cars if you are. Yeah, going to well, buy if it. you can like get just, acquire them so easily, then you probably yeah, don't you want can, to buy them. You can do so. There's wheel spins, and then there's super wheel spins. So a wheel spin is basically like you know the game show where they throw the wheel Spin and the wheel. wait yep. yeah so basically it spins around you either get money and a moat or a car i yep. think but then they've got super wheel spins where it spins three and you don't have oh. to get all three in a row you get whatever comes up so mm-hmm. like if you get a ferrari then a porsche then another ferrari you get all three of those oh lovely okay yeah, so, instead of like if they all match, then you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, you just get whatever's yeah, whatever's going. So that's mm-hmm. that's yeah, my my thought is unless you want a second car of that particular car, then I wouldn't bother buying anything. Like I got I got two Monaros. One's a oh nice. One's a drifting Monaro, and the other's on the drag. So, uh, if only nice. thought it was real life, eh? Two oh, Monaros, huh? Huh? I've got uh, two Ferraris, two Porsches. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, too many cars. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. <laughs> if only it was like that in real life. Oh, yeah. God. All right. So we're into the top five now, actually. So Forza was number five. At one point higher with a Metacritic score of 93, we have – it was actually released last year, but released this year on the PlayStation and the Xbox. Hades. This is the second indie title on the list. Have Laura, I know you haven't played Hades because I'm pretty knowledgeable in games you've played. Yes, no, I have not played Hades. Dan? Uh, it looks epic, though. Ah, well, I guess I'm the most qualified person to talk about it here. It's amazing. It's just straight up, like, you guys should definitely play Hades. I think it's, like, the highest rated indie game of all time. It was cleaned up at the game awards last year it was nominated for game of the year it deserved it i can't even remember what won but it should have been hades it won so many like like ign's game of the year last year was hades i'm pretty sure uh so it won a lot of awards that weren't the game awards i love it when indies really come through and like 100 yeah. yeah this thing like it 
it does not feel like an indie. Like, yeah. I mean, it does because it's got that charm and like not obviously not the hyper realistic art yeah. style and that type of stuff. But oh my god. It is amazing. And it didn't appeal to me. Again, it was one of those games that didn't really appeal to me because it is a roguelike. So you, it's basically like a permadeath. So you die at, and then go straight back to the start of the game. Uh, It's a roguelite in the fact that you get to keep a few things. So uh, some collectibles carry through to your next round. Your you, weapons, etc. Yeah, yeah. You spend them to upgrade your weapons or upgrade your skills and make your next run a lot easier. You basically play as Zagreus, who is the son of Hades, and he wants to escape the underworld to go visit his mother. So a pretty oh. wholesome story. Yeah, and it is a wholesome story. Hades isn't a fan of that idea and is always putting him down. And yeah, it's about just about Zagreus traveling through the underworld. I love mythology as well, so that definitely helps with that. Greek mythology is pretty pretty cool in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. Very cool. So you interact with all the gods. They all like help you. They're all on your side. And you know Zagreus is the god, so he's um yeah, he's basically trying to trying to catch up with his mom and it is fantastic. Like honestly, I, I can't recommend Hades enough. It deserves 93 easily, if mm-hmm. not more, if not more. And again, as you said, Indie Yam. Yeah. How- I just love it when they come through and clean up all of the uh, yeah. first party titles, you know. Oh, absolutely. I think it's yeah, it's it's a beautiful game. It's, I highly recommend it. It's something you can spend five minutes on or it's something you can spend 10 hours on in like a single playthrough, you know. Like if you're looking for just do one quick run, oh, I got half an hour. I have to go to work quick, let's just do a run, or I'm going to spend the next six hours and I'm going to get it, you know? <laughs> like, that's that's what it's about. It's what it's, I know people that finished it in four hours. It took me 20. So Four hours? Yeah, wow. man. Yeah, you can escape Beasts. the underworld in four hours if you want. So If you got the skills, mm. not those arthritic thumbs like myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you two getting old. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm the youngest one here. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's enough about Hades. I'd say uh, uh, it wasn't sponsored by Hades, by the way, guys. It was, uh, it's just, a, <laughs> Wouldn't it's just be a nice? great game. Yeah. <laughs> they don't need our sponsorship. <laughs> All right. Top three games of 2021, according to the Metacritic scores. Number three. This is an interesting choice. I'm not surprised in the slightest. Go on. So it's Tetris Effect Mm. coming in with a score of 95. 95. Tetris is just an absolute classic and it always will be. Like, remember when Tetris Online, like, came out on the Switch and that thing was just like. Yeah, Tetris 99. Yeah, Tetris 99. That's what it was. Battle Royale Tetris. Yeah. And that game just went off. It, yeah. it just has the hugest fan base. Yeah, it does. And Tetris Effect, it takes like a newer spin mm. on it. So, um, you know, you connect the blocks and then it'll, there's so, lots of pretty lights. It's, I think it's got like some music too. Yeah, it some does. Like new music, like a pretty cool soundtrack. It's got effects on your Tetris. It's, it's Tetris, but with effects. <laughs> You could also play multiplayer in it too. Yeah, of course. So like you can do like versus, like one on one versus, and all that type of stuff too. Yeah, which is, I mean, Tetris is classic. It's just a classic. That's why I'm, yeah, that's why I'm like not surprised about about a new re envisioned Tetris being in the being so popular top ten rated games of the year because you know it's Tetris. Oh, nobody can deny the impact of Tetris. Absolutely. We were actually talking about it earlier. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Tetris fascinating. Tetris Championships. To, yeah, fascinating to watch. Especially when there's effects. Yeah. So, you know, it's just like Tetris, but I'm sure the effects make it so much more satisfying. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't go wrong. It's a whole experience. It's definitely like re-envisioned the experience of Tetris and made it a lot more interesting for sure. No, definitely. They always find a way to do that, don't they? Yeah. Tetris is re- – I don't know who owns the rights to Tetris, but they're doing a damn good job with it. Yeah, that's an interesting – Yeah, that is point. a good question. Yeah. I mean, it's been at the forefront of people's minds since 
since gaming was a thing, really. And basically, yeah, well, it was like the, pretty early on there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the original Game Boys came with a copy of Tetris, didn't they? Yeah, I was literally just thinking that. Yeah. I think they did. I'm pretty sure they did. Well, if you were both thinking it, then yeah, they, it probably happened. We're taking yeah. it as fact. Well, what are the chances of you both thinking that? Something wrong. Pretty high, actually. Well, everyone's <laughs> phone everyone's phone came with a copy of Tetris. So Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it's um yeah, they they're doing well in Tetris effect. It holds up apparently. Mm. It's just the same. All right, should we move on to number two? It's enough about Tetris. <laughs> no, nah, again, never have enough Tetris. No, you can never have enough Tetris. Number two. The second best or the second highest rated game of the year, I guess we should start saying, with a score of 96, The House of Fada Morgana. I hadn't actually heard of this game. It's a Switch game. It's a, um, what do you call them? It's a visual novel. Yeah, visual novel. Yeah. I was thinking audio book, and then I was like, no, no and then I was it. like, visual book, and I was like, no, nah, that's not it. Close enough, visual book. It's a visual novel on Inter- the Switch. Interactive visual novel. Yeah. Yeah. It is meant to be insane. I first wrote about it because there was an article that said, like, the Switch game that's better than Zelda Breath of the Wilds, and I was like, what? No. But, yeah, it's got a, it's got a way a higher Metacritic score. Wow. I don't, yeah. Breath of the Wild. Oh, look, I don't think it's way higher. I'm pretty sure Breath of the Wilds is like 90s. But yeah, the oh, house it'll be of 90s for sure. Fada or Fader Morgana. Yeah, 96. Yeah, it's a visual novel. Uh, I I haven't played it, but it is huge in Japan. Mm, uh, I've never really got into visual novels. No. I'm I'm probably missing out. I think you would probably. It's light probably a really pleasant like experience. Like you know when you. There's different moods for different games. Oh. Like sometimes you get home from work and it's like 12.30 and you've been stressed at work so you don't really feel like going straight into the Emmy zone and getting even more stressed, you know. Yeah. But sometimes you feel like playing something relaxing like a Stardew Valley or Animal yeah. Crossing. And so a visual novel would probably be a perfect game for times like that. I agree. It would really scratch that itch, wouldn't it? I really like to have a good balance in my games in that sense. Oh, same. Yeah, I was playing, mm. oh, actually, they, they released on the same day, Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing's New Horizons. And I think we've mentioned this on the podcast before, but when I walked into um, the, our local GameStop or EB Games to pick, pick them up, they were playing heavy metal versions of the Animal Crossing songs. That's because, right. Yeah. yeah. It's like crossing over the two. The uh, Doom soundtrack is uh, quite metal. And, yeah, they're just playing covers of the Animal Crossing songs in, like, That's Doom awesome. style. It was so cool. But, yeah, you're so right. When we get home at, yeah, 1230 at night from work, I don't feel like jumping into Doom. Like, geez. Yeah. So it's such an intense But then, like, maybe before a shift, because, well, yeah. we work in hospice, so sometimes we start at, like, four sometimes yeah it's earlier than that but um yeah on the weekends like that's the perfect time for a real stressful game when you need a bit more action but not always but not always so i feel like a visual novel is a perfect time for yeah uh, look if there's one visual novel to get us started i guess it's the house of father morgana Hmm. well maybe that's what i'll get with my e-shop voucher then yeah i think it's and um, eastwood Apparently it's amazing. So I've heard great I've heard nothing but great things. Metacritic seems to agree that 96%. It's, like that is pretty that's only a measly couple of percents off a hundred, isn't it? Yeah, so, off, off a perfect game. Yeah. And the user score is also pretty, pretty good on on that as well. So yeah, can't can't go wrong, apparently. I guess well, if you're playing farming sim. You're playing Microsoft Flight Simulator. Mm-hmm. I guess there's that leaves me to dabble in the old visual novels. I guess it does. All right. There we go. I, um, turns out I'm I getting like the this. visual novel. I didn't know that we would all be like testing things out from this list, but I like it. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's a good idea. Let's do it. All right. Cool. There we go. Well, again, we'll all report. Make sure to tune in next week. We'll We've all, all got homework. Back. so Exactly. Yeah. We'll <laughs> be on it next week. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, the number one most highest rated game of 2021. I haven't heard of it. I haven't played it either. Have you guys? Nor have I, no. Elysium. So, Dan. (laughs) Well, it's an RPG. I want to say yes. Not that I've played it, but that I've heard of it. But yeah, I had heard of it. Yeah, I just brought yeah, up but the I don't cover, know much. About it. And the I'm, name rings a bell. Yeah, but I think that's the movie. Oh, is there ah. a movie? Okay, There's a movie called so Elysium, and I think that's what I've got in my head because I've just pulled up the cover now, and I've gone, nah, don't think so. that's not it. Okay, it's um something about politics, is it not? Let's read the blurb. It says that it's the it says, pursue your political dreams and new quests, meet and question more of the city's locals and explore a whole extra area. Yeah, sorry. So the, it is the final cut. So I guess it's the definitive edition of the yes. game. Yes, yeah, it is the definitive edition. Which was probably released before 2021. Well, probably, yeah. It says that this one is, yeah, the final cut is yeah. what we're talking about. So it was released yeah. for Microsoft Windows in October 2019, Mac OS in April 2020. Yep. Uh, what about the final cut? Was released for consoles in 2021 alongside yep. a free update for the PC versions. Yeah, this says the final cut on PC, 30th of March 2021. So. I guess it's not technically, but I mean, there's a couple of games that aren't technically. I mean, Tetris isn't technically a 2021 game either. Yeah, wow. Well, and neither that's is sad, Hades. Isn't it? So yeah, yeah, that's that's okay. Well, we had the Final Fantasies DLC as well. So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Final so, yeah, Fantasy. The 14. releases of 2021, and yes. yeah, this is one of them. Look, this person says still one of the best RPGs ever created. You know, now that I've we just brought up the trailer here, and I think it was announced for. Switch, yeah, yeah, it's on Switch. I think it was announced for Switch in the latest Nintendo Direct, not the Indie Direct, the actual Direct that we oh, did a I reaction see. to on our YouTube. Oh, really? Okay. Well, which is interesting. Pardon? It's on Stadia. What did you say? Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Stadia. Uh, it, I didn't know they still put <laughs> games on that thing. <laughs> yeah, so Stadia, I think, will... Uh, especially with Amazon Luna coming out, I think Stadia will continue to increase in momentum depending on what Google do next. Google are very, very good at just starting something and then dropping the ball completely and deciding not to do something, which yeah, is that that's just Google. And that's what I'm sort of, worried about with stadia is that you know they they started their own publishing company they started a game mm-hmm. publishing company i don't even think they released a game before they decided they're canning it <laughs> well it didn't really kick off did it no but they're pushing pretty hard into like normal triple a titles and all that sort of stuff so i mean Let's see what happens with Stadia. I mean, obviously, it hasn't been released here. I've never been able to... Probably even do a podcast um, subject on the Stadia situation. Definitely. I think think that's definitely subject for another day. Stadia. Mm. Yeah, well, we haven't had a chance. Well, that's your second homework assignment. Oh, yes. God. I don't no, know if don't I'll get it done this week yeah. because I need to use a VPN to access it and a few other. Yeah, well, I guess that's why we haven't tried it out either. So it was only released in North America, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. I think it's now in Canada as well. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Wow, that's North America. Yeah. So, like, yeah. United US, States and, and Canada. US, Canada. I want to say Brazil. Wait, we're we talking about North America or just Google Stadia? Just Stadia. Yeah, okay, Stadia. I was going to say, Brazil, <laughs> We South haven't America. moved on to geo- <laughs> geography. Yeah, no, it's no. It's in so Brazil. places. Okay. I remember always thinking, why did they release Stadia in Brazil? Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, 
I'm not I'm not going to fact check. Yes, I believe you. I could be wrong, so uh, don't believe me. Okay, uh, <laughs> don't believe Dan. Everybody, he has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> well, North America, um, like the USA, Canada, and allegedly Brazil. Brazil. Can Possibly. all play Disco Elysium on their Google Stadia if they yeah. want. Fair enough. Yeah, so that's the highest rate. I'm, it was kind of a bit of a... Oh, wow, I'm way off. Wow. Oh. Huh? Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, Sweden, UK, and the United States. Okay. So, so we missed most, a couple countries there. Most of Western Europe and the United States, not Brazil, no, and not Australia. Yeah, no, not Australia. That's the main nobody thing. Nobody cares about what we're doing. Yeah, uh, apparently. <laughs> well, not. they're not wrong. Yeah, yeah, not wrong. Yeah. So, Disco Elysium, the final cut, is the highest rated game of 2021. Yeah, I guess again, it was a bit of a. I don't know if I want to say a letdown, but it's just something that... It's just a bit left field, that's all. Yeah. So are you a lawyer? I have no idea. It seems like you're a lawyer. Noir detective. Or fiction. detective. That's, it's, Disco Elysium is a unique blend of noir detective fiction, traditional pen and paper RPGs. Mm. So I guess it's just... I mean, there's so so many of these, well, obviously, so many of these websites... Gave it 100%. If, in order to get a 97, there has to be so many that give it 100%. Yes, there does, yeah. Um, yeah, so Metacritic combines scores that other websites and reviewers and things like that have given them and then combines all the scores into one. So we're not just looking at one source here. It's like sources across the board. Mm. And, yeah, it's, it's got so many hundreds and 10 out of 10s and, yeah, Metacritic is at 97. So good, good on it. Disco Elysium. Yeah, it's something that, again, I guess we should play. Yep. Right? Yeah, we definitely should play it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like I'm looking at like games that didn't make it into the top 10 and there is some amazing stuff like It Takes Two. Yeah. The, well, that game, that one game of the year. Game of the Awards, game of the year. Yep, that's that's not there. Uh, Metro Dread is nowhere near the top 10 in that one Time Magazine's Game of the Year. Uh, there's some amazing games lower than that, like Age of Empires, the new one, only got an 81. Halo Infinite's only got an 81. Uh, Eastwood, 82. And look, I'm saying only, but they're great scores. Yeah, they are great scores. Like, they're fantastic scores. But, yeah, to get a 97, Disco Elysium. Good job. Good job. Nice one. So... Let us know if any of you guys have played Disco Elysium mm. and let us know if it's worth checking out. I'm a massive RPG fan, so I guess... I'd say it's probably worth checking out. Yeah, I guess I, sh- I, guess I should. Guess guess one of us should. Mm-hmm. That's your All one. right. Well, that, that wraps it up, doesn't it? Yeah. Those are them. 100%. Again, make sure you listen to these podcasts regularly to win a free game. The Willows was last week's giveaway. It just took us a while to figure out exactly what we wanted to do with it. But this week's giveaway, we're going to be running for the whole week. I haven't even ran this past the guys yet, but I have decided on how we're going to run this week's one. <laughs> if this is okay with you, put you on the spot, Dan. Uh, so I, I think... What we're going to do this week is advertise it on Instagram, on both the Some Kind Instagram and the Low Grade Gamers Instagram. So if you would like to enter, feel free to head on over there and enter via that way, just, you know, regular Instagram giveaways. But as a special bonus for listening to this podcast, all you have to do is send us a message, DM us, whatever platform you want. Whisper on Twitch, DM, send an email to the low grade gamer with the word wanted. Wanted is the secret word of the day. <laughs> and that's going to triple your entries or give you three entries. Mm. So if you have entered on Instagram, DM us with the word wanted and you will gain 
an extra three entries. Or if you don't want to enter the Instagram giveaway, you just automatically get three entries. I just pulled, I was wearing a shirt that said wanted, so I just decided on the word. I hope everyone's okay with that. Yep, sounds good to me. (laughs) All good. That's a good code word. Uh, You happy with that, Dan? Done. Easy. He literally had no idea I was going to do that, so I'm glad he's okay with it. <laughs> it could have gone awkwardly. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, everybody, for sticking around to the end. Remember, code word wanted. I feel like we're on like Sunrise or a talk show. Oh, SMS wanted to one eight hundred win a prize, and you can win a prize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny as <laughs> thank you so much for sticking around with us everyone we so much appreciate you listening to this podcast uh, hope you have just as much fun listening to them as we do putting them on for you because mm-hmm. we we do just enjoy sitting around with friends and having a chat about the world of video games yeah good times it really is yeah we, we all enjoy it so i hope you all had a wonderful christmas and a happy new year although we'll probably see you before then no nah, next week we'll be New Year will be we'll gone. see you next year. We will. Yeah. Yes. Last podcast of the year. Oh, didn't realize. I know. Oh. Stay safe. Stay safe over the silly season. It's can get quite dangerous out there. Don't go alone. <laughs> <laughs> so they say in the video game world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stay safe. Enjoy your New Year's. And hope you enjoyed your Christmas. And we'll see you next year. Bye. Bye.